Starting off number 10, we have the earthquake machine. Sometimes accidents happen, which is why it's important to have a team who can have your back. Tesla was known for being a risk taker and innovator, and you can't take risks without causing some damage sometimes. Comes with the territory. Tesla had patented a steam powered mechanical oscillator that would vibrate up and down to generate electricity. He built the machine in 1893 in his laboratory in New York, and one day he thought, hey, I want to see if I can tune the oscillator to the vibration of the building I'm in. Bad idea. The whole thing almost came tumbling down. During his test, Tesla started hearing cracking as he was turning up the power and soon all the heavy machinery started flying about the place, hence the name Earthquake Machine. Tesla had to take a hammer to it in order to stop it from bringing the house down. Obviously someone had to call the police over the event and his team had his back. The entire team kept quiet as Tesla explained that it must have been an earthquake, but no one knew that he'd accidentally turned his oscillator into an earthquake machine. In our ninth spot we have the guillotine. I'm sure you all know about this execution device. If not, pay attention in school, okay? So this consists of a razor sharp blade attached to a rope. The victim's head was placed in the middle of the frame and then the blade was dropped and well, you know, the head would be severed from the rest of the body. At least it was quick and easy. As a result, they considered it to be the most humane method of execution. But still, let's not bring this back, okay? Okay. Moving on at number eight, we have the social credit system. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to smash that like button. So this next one is literally a Black Mirror episode in real life. Basically, there is a system in the works that will record your behavior and hand out points as a result. They will monitor your online presence as well as your financial wealth and how social you are. The better this all is, then the better your score will be. People then can check those scores, like future employers, and those with better scores will do better in society. Believe it or not, but they are already using this in China. They are currently enrolling everyone into a national database and ranking every citizen. Like I said before, this is literally like that one episode from Black Mirror. If you've seen it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you'll also know why it's a bad idea. In our seventh spot today, we have the tub, and I'm not talking about a bathtub. No, no, this is another torture device used in medieval ages. So this involves placing the convicted person in a wooden tub, only their head would be sticking out. Their face would then be painted with milk and honey, attracting flies and other insects. They would then feast on the person. You thought that was bad? Well, they would continue to feed the victim so they would, you know, have to do their business in the bathtub and then sit in their own waste. But eventually they were basically eaten alive by insects, which is horrifying. In our sixth spot today, we have the automatic tip requester. This next device was invented in 1955 by a man named Russell E. Oakes. It was designed primarily for hotel bellhops. So basically what it is, is this creepy hand that would strap onto their back. It literally looks like an arm is growing out of their lumbar spine. But anyways, after they helped the guest, the guest could then tip the bellhop by putting money on the creepy hand. The money would then fall into a cash box that was also strapped onto the bellhop. Here's the thing though, if the tip was too low, a no sale sign would pop up and inform the tipper that their tip was not enough. Which I mean, if you ask me, is really embarrassing. Like imagine tipping someone and they're like, oops, sorry, that's not enough, like we actually need more. So awkward. So I can see why that flopped. Not only that, but the hand on the back just looks really freaking creepy. Like, am I staying at the haunted mansion or what? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the heretic's fork. Basically, this was a torture device that consisted of a wrench type device that was strapped to a victim's neck. Except both ends were super sharp. One end was pushed under the victim's chin, the other against their sternum. They were then strapped in and hung from the ceiling. Now, they had to keep their head up, because if they dropped it, then this device was going into their chest and their throat. So I'll say it so you guys don't have to. Disgusted? Seriously. Ugh. Moving on to number four, we have the Whispering Grocery Store. Like, this just sounds creepy, and it is. So what if you were out shopping and all of a sudden you heard someone whispering in your ear? Wouldn't that freak you out? Well, companies are trying to make this a thing. 
where they have ads playing in grocery stores. So when you're looking at a product, the voice will be telling you all the reasons why you should buy that product. Uh, that sounds an awful lot like mind control to me. No thank you. Now, a company called the Holosonics has invented something called the Audio Spotlight System. Basically, they are tiny speakers that can be used for this, in-store advertising. But you have to be standing in the right place to hear it. It's not just like a bunch of ads playing at the same time through the grocery store's big PA system. No, that would be hectic. This is just like, no, just think of like going to a museum and listening to something that tells you about the piece of art that you're looking at. That's what it is, but 10 times creepier and totally unnecessary. Moving on to number three, we have coffin torture. Back in the day, people had some sick torture inventions. Seriously, it's like they had fun inventing the most gruesome ways for people to die. This being one of them. Coffin torture involved placing the accused inside a caged coffin. They're locked in so they can't move at all. Sometimes they were even stripped naked before being placed in there. And then they were hung somewhere for everyone to see. The time they were stuck in there depended on their crime. Most were just left there to die, falling victim to dehydration or malnutrition. Some would even be picked to death by birds and insects. And again, they couldn't do anything about it because they were completely immobile. Coming in at number two, we have the knee splitter. And it's as bad as it sounds. This was another pretty gruesome torture device from the medieval ages. Basically, the device was two wood blocks connected by two large screws, and it was lined with sharp spikes. This was then placed on the front of the knee and then directly behind. Then it was turned, and the blocks would move closer and closer to each other. Then the sharp metal would just dig deeper and deeper into the flesh. You get it, okay? It would completely destroy the victim's knees, and it would probably be super painful. And in our number one spot today, we have the TV that watches you. Technology is getting way too advanced. Like, people need to calm down. Well, Verizon has a patent for this smart TV that watches your every move. It's terrifying. It can detect your movements, sounds, and reactions to what you're watching. It then records it and creates ads that are geared specifically towards you. No thank you. Isn't that terrifying? Like, you won't have any privacy anymore. I swear, you can Google toilet plungers once, and for the next week, all the ads on your computer are gonna be for toilet plungers. It's already intense. But this, this has gone way too far. Not only that, but like, let's say you and your spouse are fighting while your TV is on. It's gonna detect this and legit start making ads for like couples counseling. I'm not making that up. It's insane. This is too far. Just stop. Just let us watch TV in peace. Starting off this countdown, we have Henry Smolinski. Henry Smolinski was the inventor of the flying car. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Well, at least he tried to create a flying car. But he's on this list, so as you know, it didn't quite work out for him. So Henry, along with his partner, Hal Blake, created this by pairing together a car and a plane. He took the wings of an aircraft and configured it onto a car. As you can imagine, they had quite a difficult time with this. During the first test, they experienced engine failures. In 1973, they encountered trouble with the plane wings. On September 11th, 1973, Henry and Hal were taking their invention for a spin when the wings detached from the vehicle during a test flight. The car crashed down into a pickup truck and burst into flames. Apparently, a bad welding job was responsible for this. Sadly, the two inventors lost their lives. In our ninth spot today, we have the death ray, which is as terrifying as it sounds. Basically, Tesla wanted to create a weapon that could destroy entire armies from afar. It would be done by accelerating mercury isotopes to 48 times the speed of sound inside of a vacuum chamber. Then it would shoot a high velocity beam out and the beam would cause serious damage and could be used from a great distance. Tesla even said, and I quote, it will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla thought that this would be great for the governments. In fact, he pitched it to multiple governments, but he was constantly shut down. Now, the Soviet Union showed some interest and a partial test was conducted, but it didn't go as Tesla hoped, which I mean, I think is a good thing. Can you imagine people using this weapon during the wars or even nowadays? It would be very disastrous. Number eight, the thought camera. Nikola Tesla is like the grandfather to Black Mirror. Like he, he is that show. 
Though Tesla came up with the idea for the thought camera in 1893, he only spoke about it in 1933. He told the Kansas City Journal Post that his mind had been stewing on the idea of a camera that could read mental imagery. Tesla said, and I quote, I became convinced that a definite image formed in thought must by reflex action produce a corresponding image on the retina, which might be read by a suitable apparatus. Now, if it be true that a thought reflects on an image on the retina, it is a mere question of illuminating the same property in taking photographs and then using the ordinary methods which are available to project the image on a screen. If this can be done successfully, then the objects imagined by a person would be clearly reflected on the screen as they formed. And in this way, every thought of the individual could be read. Our minds would then indeed be like open books." Unquote. I know sometimes I consider myself an open book, but I definitely don't want all my thoughts out there. Like I need the filter. Like my brain just goes everywhere. So I don't want all people seeing that stuff. Moving on to number seven, we have the apparatus for producing ozone. It's as if Tesla was psychic and knew that in the future we would have serious issues with our ozone layer. Why? Because he had a patent for an apparatus that would produce ozone. The apparatus would force air between a pair of electrically charged plates to trigger a reaction. Because if you didn't know, ozone is created by combining oxygen with electricity. I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Anyways, back then, Tesla was concerned about the smoke evil, like the burning of coal polluting the air and causing illnesses. So he thought that if people used this device in their homes, it could purify the air. Well, here's the thing. Ozone in the upper atmosphere protects us from the sun's UV rays. But in our living room, it could seriously harm us. So I'm glad this invention didn't go through as well. Number six, the Wardenclyffe Tower. Though the tower was actually built, it was dismantled in 1917 after it was abandoned by Tesla years earlier. Tesla was a big dreamer and needed even bigger funding backing him in order for any of his ideas to be realized, which he got. The Wardenclyffe was a project backed by financier JP Morgan, who gave Tesla 150 grand to build this massive mushroom shaped tower. It was supposed to be capable of transmitting messages and images to ships at sea across the Atlantic, but Tesla had had an even bigger idea, wireless energy. He believed that he could use radio and microwaves to light up New York by transmitting millions of electricity through the air. However, this idea, should it have been successful, would have crippled other energy sectors that JP Morgan had his little fingers in, so he refused to fund Tesla any further. So Tesla sadly abandoned his project in 1907. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the remote controlled boats. In 1898, Tesla participated in an electrical exposition at Madison Square Garden. While there, Tesla presented the idea of a remote controlled boat using a wireless command post, so basically like a controller. He used this device to change the boat's direction and people were like, whoa, what the hell is going on? He's a wizard, he's using magic, how is he controlling it? He was so far ahead of his time that he even created an anti-hacking mechanism so that no one could get control of the boat. Now he tried to sell this idea to the US Navy. He pitched it saying that they could have pilotless submarines or torpedoes, but they weren't interested. Honestly, he was a brilliant inventor. His inventions were just way too advanced for his time. Now here's the thing that makes this invention mysterious and spooky. Tesla had other plans for this invention. He didn't truly want to make remote controlled boats. No, no, no. He wanted to warm people up to the idea of robots. More on this shortly. Number four, an artificial tidal wave. This next invention was designed to move the seas, if it ever set sail in the first place. Tesla wanted to use physics to prevent war and believe he could harness the power using the sea. In 1907, New York World reported Tesla's new military invasion, which again was supposed to be using wireless telegraphy. The machine was designed to trigger explosions within the sea that would create massive tidal waves big enough to capsize enemy fleets. The purpose would be to make the navies of enemy countries useless. But the invention never came to fruition, but it certainly foreshadowed another detonation device that would bring a world war to an end. Any guesses as to what that might be? And at number three, we have the humanoid robots. Now remember the whole robot thing I just teased about? Well, Tesla wanted to invent humanoid robots. He wanted to develop a race of robots or mechanical men that would do all the hard work for us. At the same convention in 1898, Tesla showed off part of his robot invention. 
he asked audience members to ask this device mathematical questions. The device would solve the questions and provide the answer by blinking the lights on its antenna an appropriate number of times. He was really pushing for this automation, like having things move and think on its own without an operator. Not only was he hoping to make humanoid robots, but also wanted to use these devices to control organs or to create self-driving vehicles, etc. He pitched his idea to the military, to the US government, and to Great Britain, but no one picked up on it. Again, kind of good because we don't need a race of robots wiping out the human race. Coming in at number two, we have the electric powered supersonic airship. Who doesn't dream of leaping into the air and flying? Tesla was no exception to this and from a young age was fascinated with flight. It was only a matter of time before he came up with his own idea of how to get around the world. When the warden cliff failed, he turned his eyes to the sky. Using his knowledge of electrical and mechanical engineering, he dreamed up a supersonic airship. He first discussed his ideas in July 1919 in Reconstruction Magazine, in which he described a craft that could travel 8 miles above the earth, aiming for passengers to travel from New York City to London in 3 hours. He was yet still obsessed with the idea of wireless electricity and believed the craft could be powered by it, meaning they didn't need fuel. Tesla still had never given up on the power plant aspect of the Wardenclyffe and believed if enough were built around the world, their power supply would be unlimited. We have gotten pretty close to realizing Tesla's dream with kinds of crafts we have today, <laughs> like the ones that were flying over our building today. But Tesla never realized the dream himself. And in our number one spot today, we have the UFOs. Did you know that Tesla came up with a UFO spacecraft that looked an awful lot like the ones we see in alien movies? In fact, people believe that he was in contact with aliens and they told him how to invent this craft. In 1928, Tesla created a patent called the world's first flying saucer. Not only would it defy gravity, but it would have been the fastest aircraft out there even to this day had they successfully created it. So the UFO resembled both a helicopter and an airplane component wise. There were no wings or propellers, giving it that UFO spacecraft vibe. Had it been created, it would have changed the world of aviation forever. When Tesla built an experimental station, he said he picked up some strange signals from space. He believed these signals were from aliens and that they provided him with a code that translated to 1234. He believes they sent out a code in numbers because numbers are universal. So could it be that he actually did make contact with aliens and then they provided him with instructions on how to build this craft or what? Starting off this countdown, we have the smile mask. In the wake of World War I, Budapest, Hungary saw a lot of their residents take their own lives. One way they thought they could handle this problem was through smile school. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It started as a joke by Professor Gino and a hypnotist named Bingso, but then it actually turned into a real life thing. Basically, it was a school that taught everyone about smiles and analyzed different people's smiles, like the Mona Lisa smile. One thing that they invented at the school was the smile mask. It was given to people with depression to wear and was believed to cure it. Basically, it was like a card with a painted smile on it that was then strapped to your face. It was thought that just by wearing a fake smile, it would automatically cure your depression. But in reality, it looks terrifying, like some sort of torture device from the Saw movies. I don't think this worked. If anything, it would have made the depression worse. Like, who wants to walk around wearing that 24-7? Coming in at number 9, we have Thomas Midgley Jr. So, he was an American engineer and chemist. Sadly, when he was 51 years old, he contracted polio. But that didn't stop him from inventing. In fact, he created a system to help others lift him out of bed. He did this with a complex system of strings and pulleys, but in 1944, he became trapped in the ropes and was strangled to death by them. He passed away at the hand of his invention. In our eighth spot, we have William Bullock. William Bullock was an American inventor who created the rotary printing press in 1863. This invention helped revolutionize the printing industry greatly. The press could print up to 12,000 sheets an hour and later it could print as many as 
30,000 sheets an hour. Sadly, William passed away while trying to repair it. His foot ended up getting crushed under the machine after trying to kick a pulley into place. He survived the incident, but later his foot developed gangrene after getting infected. He passed away while getting his foot amputated. Coming in at number seven, we have Henry Winstanley. Henry Winstanley was the inventor of the first Eddie Stone lighthouse. The lighthouse was eight feet high and 24 feet in diameter. His other designs failed, but he had high hopes with this one. In fact, he wished, and I quote, to be in the lighthouse during the greatest storm that ever was. And well, his wish did come true. On November 14th, 1698, the lighthouse became operational. Here's the thing. Over the years, the lighthouse began to deteriorate. One night, there was a huge storm warning, and Henry would get his wish to be in the lighthouse during a storm. But the lighthouse was no match for the powerful storm. The night, the lighthouse collapsed, taking the lives of Henry and five other men. Moving on to number six, we have Marie Curie, a great chemist who won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1903. Curie is known for a number of things. She discovered the elements radium and polonium. Due to her work and research, she is credited with inventing radiography or x-rays. Sadly for her work, she was often exposed to radiation. This was before they knew the dangerous effects that ionizing radiation has on the body. She would often do her experiments in a shed with no safety measures. And apparently she used to carry around test tubes containing radioactive isotopes in her pocket. She even kept them in her desk drawer. So yeah, that's not safe. In July of 1934, she passed away from a plastic anemia as a result of her exposure to radiation. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Alexander Bogdanov. Alexander can be thanked for the invention of blood transfusions. That has saved countless lives. But he started doing blood transfusions to see if there were any rejuvenating effects. All throughout the 1920s, he was running experiments on this to try and achieve eternal youth. He had 11 blood transfusions and was adamant that it was helping him. He claimed it improved his eyesight and stopped his balding. Sadly, on his 12th transfusion, something went wrong. He exchanged a liter of blood with a physics student but they had traces of tuberculosis and malaria in the blood. After the transfusion, his body began shutting down. On April 7th, 1928, his heart failed and he passed away. In our fourth spot, we have Sylvester H. Roper. Sylvester was responsible for inventing the world's first motorcycle. How it worked was it was basically a bicycle with a steam engine attached. For 13 years, he used his invention. It was cool, but it didn't go very fast. In 1896 though, he got it to go up to 40 miles per hour. On June 1st, 1896, Sylvester took his invention out for a ride to show off his new speed. However, while on the ride, he actually suffered from a heart attack, or so they believe. He wiped out and then passed away. To the witnesses around, they say the vehicle went off course and then crashed into the sand. But according to the autopsy, he had a heart attack, lost control, and then crashed. In our third spot, we have Horace Lawson Hunley. Horace Lawson Hunley invented the submarine, but it was never as successful as he wanted. His first design ended up trapping seven sailors underwater. They all sadly passed away. So he went back to working on it to make it bigger and better. But his second model was a fail again. The submarine sank in Mobile Bay, Alabama. But that didn't get him down. He made another model. Sadly, this model took his life. On October 15th, 1863, Hunley decided to go on board of the submarine while running another test. Sadly, it sunk again and Hunley, along with some crew members, were trapped underwater. Some did manage to survive, but Hunley did not. In our second spot, we have Valerian Abakovsky. He is responsible for inventing the Aero Wagon, which was a propeller driven rail car. His goal was to use it to transport officials quickly across the Soviet Union. The car had an aircraft engine attached to it and propeller traction. It could go up to 87 miles per hour. On July 24th, 1921, Valerian, along with some other men, decided to take the vehicle from Moscow to Tula to test it out. They successfully reached their destination. However, they never made it back. On the way home, the aero wagon derailed and seven out of the 22 men on board passed away, including Valerian. And in our number one spot, we have Franz Rieschelt. 
on February 4th, 1912, inventor Franz climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower. His plan was to jump off and use the suit he made to fly down to the ground. The suit he wore was a wearable parachute and resembled just a big cloak. At first, he said he would test the suit out with a dummy, but that day, for some reason, he said he was going to make the jump himself. Although past attempts with the dummy failed, he was still determined to try his invention out himself. Around 8.22 that morning, he was on top of the Eiffel Tower. He stood there proud and then stepped off the ledge. Sadly, the parachute folded around his body immediately and he plummeted down to the ground. He left a 5.9 inch crater in the ground. And as you can imagine, his injuries were gruesome. But apparently, an autopsy revealed that he passed away from a heart attack during his fall. So when he hit the ground, he was already dead. Mm -hmm. 